Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Jeff, the IT guy. Welcome back to another video. If you haven't been here before, welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy what we're going to be looking at today. If you've ever thought to yourself, hmm, you know what? I'd really like to have a thin, light, all AMD gaming system. If you've ever thought that, well, you're in luck. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MSI Delta 15. The MSI Delta 15 is an all AMD 240 hertz beast. Features the Ryzen 7 5800H, which is an 8 core 16 thread 45 watt chip. It's got an RX 6700M with 10 gigs of VRAM. It's got 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM with a one terabyte NVMe drive. It's wrapped up in a gray aluminum body that is just 0.75 inches thick and weighs only 4.19 pounds, and you get a 240 watt power brick, which I think is quite small and weighs around 1.8 pounds. So you're gonna get a total weight of six pounds if you were to put this entire package in your backpack or a laptop bag, uh, which isn't really gonna break your back. So that's pretty nice, pretty good to have. So the ports on this machine, they're a mixture of good and bad in my opinion. Um, you will find a, a power port and a USB-C, a USB 3.2, and an audio combo jack on the left side of the laptop. And on the right side, you're going to find an HDMI, a USB-C, and another USB 3.2. It's good to know that this USB-C can do DisplayPort out. Um, while it's nice to not just have four USB-C ports and be required to carry around a keychain full of dongles, um, an Ethernet port would have been great to have to, and also to see on this caliber of laptop. Also, the ports are on the midport point of the laptop, um, which can make plugging in devices be a little cumbersome. Um, instead of them being more towards the rear back here, you're going to have them here in the middle, uh, which can make it, you know, make it a little tough if you're wanting to plug in a bunch of stuff, especially if you're going to put it on your desk and whatnot. And so the keyboard, I'll show you. It features a single zone RGB, which given MSI's flair for RGB and rainbow vomit, I did expect to see four zone or per key RGB, to be honest. Um, MSI doesn't specify whether the keyboard is mechanical. I don't believe it is. Um, however, it is really a joy to type on. I spent quite a bit of time typing documents for the channel as well as email, notes, and items for work. And I had a blast typing on it, and I thought it did really well, even though it's not mechanical. Um, the travel distance is really nice. It's just a really nice uh, laptop. The backlighting is bright. You can dim it. Um, I also like the controls on the laptop as well, up in the top. You don't have to use the function key to turn the volume down or up or mute it. Um, which is really nice. And I really do like the addition of a mic mute and camera off button up at the top. I think that's pretty cool. It's really awesome to see on this thing. And so the screen on the MSI Delta 15 is a 240 hertz IPS panel. It's a 16.9 aspect ratio by nine aspect ratio, 15.6 inch display. It isn't the brightest, However, the color accuracy is quite good. It does cover 100% of the sRGB scale, 77% of the Adobe scale, and from what I've read elsewhere, it can do 78% of the DCI-P3 scale. And that's quite impressive considering the price tag of this machine and the maximum performance, you know. I mean, this is a 240 hertz IPS panel, which is really awesome. It's really good for gaming. And so the battery on this machine is an 82 watt hour. The MSI boasts can do over 10 hours of video playback, um, which it has to do that considering that this is an AMD Advantage laptop. And so I wasn't able to run tests on this for 10 hours just constantly, but I did use the laptop unplugged for five to seven hours on Saturday, working on some Word docs, watching YouTube, you know, shopping some of those Cyber Week deals, and, you know, really during that whole time, not one time did I think I was going to run out uh, of battery life. Um, the laptop, though, according to other reviewers um, who have done, you know, these actual tests, do confirm that it can play a video back for 10 hours 
which is quite impressive for a laptop that has this much power and is a gaming machine. That's not something you really see on a gaming machine. Um, so that's pretty good to see. All right, so this is the time you've all been waiting for where we talk about performance of this machine. Sure, specs are great, but you wanna know what can it do? What can the 5800H and the 6700M do when it's combined in this harmonious marriage known as AMD Advantage? And it actually does quite impressively. Um, while running Cinebench, we did see a multi-core score of 10,227, which is a bit lower than the average of the 5800H, but it's still pretty close to it. And during the multi-core run, um, the laptop gave an all-core clock of 3.6 gigahertz, and it had an average temperature of 83 degrees, which it is a relief to see that this laptop did not thermal throttle. Um, not once did it thermal throttle while I was gaming or doing anything that I was doing. Um, it did really well. The cooling solution on this thing is, is amazing. It's awesome. And so when gaming, we get to really see this laptop shine. And I ran five tests. The first two were eSports titles to really take advantage of the 240 hertz display. So in League of Legends, with maxed out settings, we got 240 FPS. It never dropped below it. It was smooth. It looked great. The colors were vibrant. Um, the game was an absolute joy to play. The next game was um, Fortnite. And we had a mix of like high and medium settings and I was able to get a rock solid 200 FPS. The game performed great. And I do believe if I could play Fortnite at all, I could have at least got, you know, maybe half a kill. Maybe not a whole one, but at least half a one. Um, but it did look really good and it played really great. It was smooth. And so the next three games are representative of today's AAA titles that require different levels of performance or hardware. And so first we have Call of Duty Vanguard. It's a super popular AAA title from this year. And at high settings with some of the anti-aliasing uh, turned down and with FSR, which is Fidelity Super Resolution or something like that, um, it's set to ultra quality, which is the lowest of the FSR settings. So it doesn't hinder the visuals that much. We got around 160 to 180 FPS and it was just smooth as butter. The only complaint is I wish it was on like a 32 inch monitor and not a 15 inch screen, but it did fantastic. It looked great. It was smooth as could be. Next up, of course, is probably this year's biggest title and a personal favorite, which is Halo Infinite. And at first I couldn't get this game to run. It wouldn't boot or anything, but after doing some research, um, AMD had a specialty driver out that was only for Halo Infinite after uh, installing that, I was able to load the game and get to fragging. And I was surprised at how much power Halo actually required this time. And so having to put, I had to put the set, meetings, uh, settings to medium to get 144 FPS. However, the game still looked excellent. I couldn't really tell a difference between medium to high and high to ultra, except for the, ultra, the extra frames and the buttery smooth gameplay. It was awesome. Legit. And so last on the list is Battlefield 2042, the bane of my existence. Um, just a terrible, terrible piece of junk in this game, let me tell you. It was like it was coded by a bunch of high schoolers who just learned how to use Unity and thought they were going to release the next big indie hit in the guise of a AAA title. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter what I set the settings to in the game. If it was ultra high, medium, it didn't matter what I set the game to. The game looked bad and it performed bad as well. And this is weird because every other game looked great, but there was just something about Battlefield that no matter what I did, I just couldn't get it to look good. And finally, with a mix of like medium-ish and some high settings thrown in there, I was able to get it to look better, you know, and I got around 75 FPS consistently, whether I was in a helicopter, a tank, or infantry, whatever. And so this game, it's just dookie. But to be honest, don't play Battlefield on a 15 inch display. Just don't do it. Get yourself a real monitor um, and go at it. And I gotta say this, I play on a 32 inch 1440p monitor and with the 3080 and the 5900X, and it still doesn't look that great. So 
it's nothing against this laptop. So this is the conclusion time. And so all in all, the MSI Delta 15, it surprised me. You know, like I said, given its current price of $12.99, this laptop's a steal. And it's probably my favorite laptop I've ever had or reviewed, except for maybe the Razer Blade 15. And it's a close tie though. Um, it performs great, it has an excellent screen, excellent battery life, excellent build construction, excellent cooling. I just use it and I'm like, wow, laptop, I love you. Um, however, this love, it isn't without some complaints or criticisms. The trackpad on this thing is meh, but don't use the trackpad. Uh, it's all centered and I do wish it had a little bit better of a keyboard, you know, mostly like RGB, mechanical would be great. And also the Wi-Fi on this thing, it drops out quite a bit when you're starting it up and just for a first few minutes after coming out of sleep. However, after that time, it's pretty rock solid and stable. And also MSI, please, please, please put an ethernet port on a gaming laptop. What's wrong with you? But also it can be a little loud, but in a laptop this small with this much power, of course it's gonna be a little loud. I mean, it's only, four pounds and 0.75 inches thick, may have aluminum, and it's rocking out hardcore frames. And so it's gonna go loud. And so at the end of the day, I give this uh, laptop four line of Sebastians and my approved seal of approval, buy it. Seriously, if you're looking for a gaming laptop around the 12.99 mark, buy this laptop. Make sure to use my links though, cause I've got kids to feed. Well, there are starving mouths and the Jeff the IT Guy household, and I need you all to go out and just buy this laptop, just a ton of them. You won't be disappointed in this laptop, trust me. It is a great, great time. Um, as always though, if you've enjoyed the view, review, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you own this laptop? Um, or do you have any other laptops that you think are really cool? And let me know. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe um, because it really helps me out. And so without subscribers, you know, I can't really make videos like this. Um, it's a good metric on how well videos are doing and how my channel's doing. And so I really appreciate it if you would go ahead, smash that subscribe button, stay tuned because we're gonna be looking at a lot of, of cool stuff. We're gonna start doing like a lot of fan testing and cooler testing. Um, given the market, you know, we're gonna focus on things that are attainable to you that don't cost a ton of money, but that can increase your performance as well as you know, give you something to do um, in the meantime. So we're gonna be taking a look at a bunch of fans from different vendors, cheap and expensive, different coolers, all sorts of stuff here on the channel. Also, if you'd like to really support the channel, you could buy you a shirt that has my face on it and then everyone will know that you're hip and you're cool. Um, trust me, people love these shirts. I go out in public and they just stare at me. And they just, they just stare for so long. And trust me, you want that as well. Go ahead, buy some shirts and subscribe and stay tuned for more great videos. It's been a pleasure chatting with you all. I really love you. And as always, keep it real.